Hi, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name's Courtney. Oh my goodness, I haven't filmed a video in so long. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm graduating in two months from college, if that tells you anything. But while I was away, we hit a thousand subscribers. Woo! Fucking confetti, people clapping, yay! So, <laughs> sorry, that was obnoxious, but... I wanted to do like something fun to celebrate so I asked people on Instagram for questions and now I'm going to answer them. But before we get into that, I'll talk about the art a little bit that you're seeing. Um, I watched Our Flag Means Death like two days ago and my brain has been taken over by these silly little pirates so I had to draw Taika Waititi Blackbeard basically and that's what you're seeing. Um, usually I like record my screen when I'm filming speed paints, but I decided to actually like film my whole iPad so you can actually see my hand while I'm doing it and you can like see maybe more what I'm doing. Like I feel like I like the time lapse feature in Clip Studio, but it basically just records every mark that you make as like a single frame, whether or not that mark took you like a second or like if it's a longer like slower movement so I thought it might be interesting to see um I thought it might be interesting to see this let me know if you like this or the other way we can kind of keep going back and forth and experimenting it it gets to a certain point where the color just doesn't know what to do um so sorry about that but yeah let's get into it all right, so I basically wrote these down in like chronological order from when I got them. I didn't really like organize them, so sorry. But anyway, uh, first question. Are you helping John Bellion with his animated series? No, <laughs> wish I was, that'd be fun, but no. Uh, I know as little about it as you guys do, but I'm excited. I hope, I hope it, you know, some stuff comes out about it soon, but also I get that animation is hard especially when you don't have a big like studio and also with covid so you know i i will be patient i really don't care as long as we see it at some point that'd be fun next one what inspires you slash how do you come up with ideas this came up like a couple times in like slightly different wording um i get inspiration like anywhere like i think the more sources of inspiration someone has the more interesting their art becomes like i remember when i was in high school i was very limited to like my own internet sphere so like whatever i saw on tumblr basically and i wasn't really even following like fine artists on tumblr i was just sort of like you know I was drawing fan art of Fall Out Boy, I was seeing fan art of Fall Out Boy. Like, it was sort of a echo chamber in that way. So, coming to art school and, like, getting exposed to, like, both historical but mainly, like, contemporary artists and just kind of expanding beyond your own practice. Like, I like, you know, seeing ceramics and metalsmithing and animation and printmaking and weird video installation performance art. Like... And, you know, also, like, watching different films and uh, TV shows and books and graphic novels and web comics and music and podcasts. Like, having a lot of places you're pulling from really kind of makes your work more interesting. So, for my work, like, it really just kind of depends, like, what I'm looking at at that exact moment. It really, like, there isn't, like, a concrete way that I like come up with ideas or what inspires me it's really kind of like an intuitive like oh I saw this thing and now this thing's making me think of this thing so yeah just kind of being open to anything and not limiting yourself to like what you look at or what you um I don't want to say consume because I hate the like consumer content language around art these days but yeah, just like kind of look at everything, even if you don't necessarily think you'll like it, like just look at it and you can be like, okay, anyway, like <laughs> there's no harm in, you know, just looking at as much stuff as you can, even if it's like, wow, I love the colors that the sky is reflecting onto the windows of this business building and that can inspire like the color palette for a drawing. Like there's so many different ways for just weird stuff like that to kind of get your mind going. All right, next, 
what's your dream job after graduation and what would you settle for if you don't get that? So I think I want to make a video about my experience in like illustration like in terms of education because like I just think it's so commercial and kind of like frustrating and part of what makes me want to uh, make that is because I don't have a dream job. Like, I don't know. I'd like love it if Orville Peck or Paramore, like any of the people that I listen to wanted to like commission me for work. Like, yeah, of course, that'd be awesome. But obviously that's not like sustainable. Like I can't just do that forever. But like, I don't know. I don't want to be like, like obviously I'm still probably gonna do client work. So I don't want to burn a lot of bridges. But my dream job is to make whatever I want and pay my rent and live comfortably. Like, you know, through different like income streams or whatever. That's like my dream. Like, I just want to be able to make whatever weird gay little things I want and people can, you know, support me in whatever way they can. And like, that would be awesome. And that would be enough for me. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have like a dream job. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I've, I've never really had like a dream job. I just want to make the work I want to make. And I think that's kind of more of like a fine art way of thinking. I'm not sure. But anyway, sorry, that's not an awesome answer to that question. But it's how I feel. What's your best advice for art post secondary or even just continuing art? Well, I guess for me, like, I don't know, art was kind of the thing that made me sane. <laughs> like, I just cannot imagine a life without art in it in some way or another. So I guess for me, like, I don't know, I feel like I just needed to do it. And so I found whatever way I could to continue to do it. So just maybe like, you know, finding whatever is exciting to you about art, like whether it's the process of making or if it's like the final image or being around other artists or seeing like find whatever is interesting to you about art and just really kind of latch on to that and don't let it go basically <laughs> like just do whatever you have to do to like continue to stay motivated and I think you know in one way or another even you know if it's just a hobby or if you decide to pursue it for like financial reasons, you'll find a way to keep doing it. Next question. What's it like getting to work with John Bellion? It must be so exciting. So I would like to just state for the record that I'm not currently working with him. Like, you know, I did do that one poster and it was fucking awesome and amazing. But that whole process of like his manager reaching out to me and the artwork being done was a week in like November of 2020. So yeah that whole experience was like crazy and awesome and like dream come true but I'm not currently working with him and even then I the middleman for that was Jordan Cohen from Lawrence the band who are also awesome and you should listen to them if you aren't already but yeah um I'm not currently working with him but when I was it was pretty exciting <laughs> Okay, brief intermission in the question answering. Uh, sorry for the audio quality of this video. I, I have this microphone that I haven't really used before and I think like it's objectively better quality than what I've been using, but I, I thought like, I don't know, the first time I used it, it sounded too echoey. So I like put a fucking blanket over my head and I just listened back to what I recorded and it doesn't sound awesome. So sorry, sorry. Anyway. Um, do you do any drawing exercises or anything as practice? I should honestly practice more. <laughs> I think, you know, everybody has room for improvement. Um, one thing that I really like to do, like, I don't even know if I really do it as like an exercise, but just, you know, as a fun thing, wind down during like my academic classes is life drawing. So just, you know, drawing my peers and what I'm seeing. And I think doing that really helps in kind of understanding the human form and, um, like just being able to kind of capture something quickly and like capture the essence of it versus getting bogged down with details. Um, I also think color studies are really good. So like, you know, just kind of looking at an image and rewiring and like, uh, figuring out how to, uh, like replicate the colors and like really paying attention, especially like digitally if you're doing it, like paying attention to how those color relationships work. That was really helpful for me personally. 
favorite movies. So I have my letterbox pulled up. <laughs> And my favorites there are The Lighthouse, The Green Knight, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and Pride and Prejudice. Um, I know, an interesting mix. I do stand by those. I would also say, like, Hereditary is an awesome movie. Um, Raw is a movie that I don't know if I even want to watch again, but that one viewing experience was so potent. Like, it just like a really incredible film. Uh, also, I'm a big fan of David Lynch's work. I would say, like, specifically, Fire Walk With Me and um, Mulholland Drive for his film. I still need to see... I haven't seen some of it. Like, I need to see uh, Lost Highway and Inland Empire. So, like, those might be my favorite ones, and I just haven't seen them yet. I don't know. But big into Twin Peaks so Fire Walk with me is like incredible and also Mulholland Drive is just like amazing I need to watch it again. How to improve? Um keep find something that makes you want to draw and keep drawing it and drawing it and drawing it and eventually you'll get better. <laughs> like that's basically how I like got into drawing. Oh I just realized that's a question that I missed. Sorry okay I'll maybe I'll answer two birds with one stone. So basically like, I don't know, maybe it's undiagnosed ADHD, maybe it's just my brain, but like uh, my initial impetus for wanting to get into drawing was just wanting to be able to draw the things that I liked. So like I loved SpongeBob, I wanted to be able to draw SpongeBob, so I tried. And I wanted to be able to draw Snoopy, so I did the same thing. And then when I got into middle school, um, I got exposed to anime for the first time and I was like, oh my god, I need to draw these anime girls right now. So like just finding something that makes your brain itch that you're like, I need to put this, like I need to put this idea into something visual or like experiential and like I just need to make art about it. Like hold on to that and like ring it till it's dry and then find the next thing and just keep going and like, you know, maybe learn some basics like you know shapes and color theory and stuff like that and you'll get better. <laughs> How did you grow on Insta? So there are like kind of several eras for the Courtney cryptozoology like Instagram brand. In high school I actually had a different account that got to like 10,000 followers but then I abandoned it just because the engagement was so bad. Like 10,000 followers but only 200 likes on a post because like a lot of the people that were following me exclusively followed me for 21 Pilots fan art. <laughs> yeah I was into 21 Pilots if you didn't know but yeah so I moved accounts and I think I don't know um I still do a lot of fan art but just being able to I, I don't know I I drew fan art and people who like that thing followed me like Obviously, you don't have to do fan art. Like, my lo most liked post on Instagram, period, is this Batman one that I did, like, really recently. But then my second most liked one is the, like, one of the pieces for my thesis, which is, like, totally original and, like, doesn't have a fan base, obviously. But it has, like, 17,000 likes, and I kind of don't know. Like, I don't have a good answer for how to game the Instagram algorithm, because I don't think I necessarily know how it works fully. Um, just, like, consistently posting and, like, I don't know, if you want to make reels, make reels. Like, that's kind of all I can give you. Like, it's been, like, I've had this account for, like, almost five years, I guess, or four and a half. And I only really started like getting going in the past like year and a half in terms of like wide engagement. So yeah, I don't know. Just kind of keep at it, I guess. Courtney, why are you so damn cool and nice? Aww, thank you. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just a silly little guy. I'm just a silly, goofy little guy. How did you figure out your art style and how long did that take? I would say I'm still figuring out my art style. Um, I think everybody is kind of perpetually figuring it out. Um, you know, I, I say that like I started taking art seriously when I was in sixth grade, so when I was 11. Um, oh, fuck, I've been drawing for like 10 years, sorry. <laughs> time, time be crazy. But yeah, so 10 years basically to figure out my art style. Um, I would say like 
the tactics that I employ now really kind of started taking form in the past two years. Like, and the texture stuff, I guess I think I started that only like last summer. So like a year, but also like, I think my art style is always kind of changing just because, you know, we as humans are always kind of changing and getting exposed to new things, wanting to do things. So like, I think just seeing other people's art and then being like, huh, I want to try something like that. Like not copying, but like seeing, like responding to what you like about their work and trying to like incorporate that into your own work. Like that's basically how you figure out your art style. It's just kind of like, a lovely little quilt or tapestry of all the stuff you like, at least in my experience. Any videos slash other recs for learning more cartoony slash non-realistic styles? So I think um, more so than like videos, something that helped me in terms of figuring out how to like approach things in a more not realistic way is just looking at other artists who are already doing that and kind of seeing how they're doing it and like you know if they have a long if they've been posting online for a while like going back and kind of seeing where they started and seeing where different things kind of came up and then just you know troubleshooting trying to like reverse engineer how they did it like I remember when I was probably 13 like when I just got my first drawing tablet um I remember Viria, who's like the artist, official artist for Percy Jackson now, which is like awesome. But back then she was just a fan artist. And I remember like looking at her DeviantArt gallery and then like she had this one Percy Jackson like sketch dump page and like looking, like tracing over how she made the shape she did and then trying on my own to like figure out how can I do something like that in my own work. So like, I think like, you know, studying in that way and then like actually like doing your own thing and then kind of conferencing back and seeing like, okay, what worked, what didn't, like that's kind of how to workshop it, I think. But like, I, I empathize with your struggle because I think like drawing cartoony or not realistic when you have been drawing realistic is really difficult. Like my process in art school has kind of been like unpacking like how do I make stuff like because like I prefer more not realistic stuff personally but yeah I was drawing a lot of realistic stuff so just like yeah just trying different things and like seeing how other people are doing it studying from them yeah do I have a favorite piece that I've drawn that's really tough I do you know not to toot my own horn but I do like a lot of the work I make um I'm really into this cowboy piece that I did. I'll show it on screen. Um, you know, I am working on like a gra I don't know if it's a graphic novel. It's I'll talk about it more actually because that's like the project I think I'm gonna undertake like right after graduation. But yeah, I love the colors and how they turned out. Like it's such an interesting atmosphere that I hadn't really captured in my art before, I think, and I still kinda have it <laughs> after the fact. Um yeah, and I just love my cowboy guy. Y'all don't really know him yet, but I love him. He's my bestie. Yeah, he's just a little sad guy. I love your art, and of course, Agent Cooper and your style. Thank you, heart. And for those uninitiated, that's Agent Cooper from Twin Peaks, which if you haven't watched it, you should. You should. It's really good. What is a source of inspiration for your work? Fantastic work, by the way. Thank you. And, um... Right now, you know, I'll give you like a specific one. I've been really looking into like pre-literacy like Christian art. So like there's the pro and like illuminated manuscripts. And I'm really interested because I want to go into like narratives and, um, you know, explore different ways that I can storytell visually. I think stuff like that and quilts and just stuff that isn't necessarily a comic but is still visually communicating a story like that sort of stuff is really interesting to me right now where did i get my username from so basically what happened is that when i was like 15 like i've talked about i had a tumblr blog that was bandom which if you don't know it's just people talking about you know band members and songs and stuff and i was very specifically into fallout boy like that was my gateway into it 
And so, like, I remember I had a URL, like a username, wasn't super into it, so I needed something else. And uh, for those who aren't in, weren't into Fall Out Boy as much as I was, the lead singer, Patrick Stump, had a solo album in 2011 called Soul Punk. And there's a song on there called Run Dry, Cross My Heart, Cross My Fingers. But the B side of that song is called Cryptozoology. Like there's a sudden shift and it like shifts into a whole other song. And I love that part. Like I, I do like that song. I just listened to it this morning actually like in preparation for this video. Because I was like, do I still like that song? I do. I don't love it, but I do like enjoy it. And so I do, you know, like Cryptozoology. Like... I don't know, it's, it's kind of like colonialist in a lot of ways. Like the more I think about it, the more I kind of sour on it. But in terms of like the creatures themselves, I do love some weird little creatures. And so, yeah, um, if you're, you know, familiar with like trying to find a username online, most regularly spelled like actual words are already taken. So cryptozoology with the Y was taken so I did a V because it kind of looks like a Y and now that's the name that tens of thousands of people recognize me by. <laughs> Yay! All right favorite amphibian. I had to I had to double check make sure I knew amphibians versus reptiles. I do. Yay me. Um, but I, I'm really into like salamanders like not even a specific one just kind of that genre of animal really into like I don't think they're actually slimy, but, you know, just a little slimy little guys, you know, frogs and toads, of course, you know, I also do like, but really into salamanders. Any advice for people planning on starting art school this year? I think I will make a whole separate video about that because now that I'm almost done with it, I feel like I have a better grasp on it and better advice I can give. Um, but for right now, I guess just like try to enjoy it, you know, learn from your peers, the friends you make in fall semester probably won't be the ones that you keep for the entire time, but they also might be. But, you know, if it doesn't work out, it's okay. Thoughts on scarecrows? Um, I think they're really cool. I, you know, I do appreciate them. Like when I'm playing Stardew Valley, I like to, you know, get all the rare ones. Like that's really fun. Um, I don't know how it affects like crows and their like diet. Like I don't know if they need like... I maybe I should have looked more into it. I guess I don't I'm not fully informed on how they impact the ecosystem and like if it's just, you know, kind of a result of capitalism and like agricultural farming. I don't know, but just on like a form level, really into them. I like them. I like them in a scary context. I like them in a normal context. And the last one what gives you inspiration for your drawings? Kind of already answered. And how do you stay motivated? So I think something that I'm still kind of learning is to have like a good work-life balance, which is hard when you're like freelancing so you can like hypothetically work all the time. But just being able to kind of set limits and be like, okay, I'm going to work for this bit and then I'm going to take a break and I'm not going to feel guilty about taking a break because I need a break. Um, and like just kind of being able to have breaks really, I find, makes me more motivated because I'm not like burnt out. And then also having like multiple things going on at the same time. So you can kind of like bounce around. Like if you start working and then you're like, oh, I don't really feel like working on this specific thing right now. Then you can like pivot for a little bit and then come back like... I find that that helps. Um, I don't know if that's like an awesome answer, but that's just what my heart's saying. So yeah, that's the end of all the questions. Um, I can't remember if I actually said it or not at the beginning of the video, but thank you for a thousand subscribers. That's awesome. Uh, I really want to kind of lean more into the YouTube side of things as I go forward. I know I say that every time I make a video. This time I mean it. I promise I'm going to do it. I really want to. I also want to try live streaming because I think that would be fun. So yeah, thank you so much for the support. Just like generally, like I'm guessing probably people from my Instagram or Twitter or Tumblr will probably watch this too. So like, thank you. Like you guys are amazing. You make, you know, obviously I would do art even if it was just for me, but it is also nice seeing that other people like it too. So, yeah.
my, my professor hates when people end stuff with that. So yeah, thank you for watching. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. I hope to post more and will post more. That's a threat. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.